You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live. Next, featuring intimate and in-depth interviews with Black Hollywood's next edition of Stars and Influencers. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live, next... Welcome, welcome, welcome to Black Hollywood Live, where we are keeping you fresh and up to date on the latest and hottest things in Black Hollywood. I'm your host, Ebony K. Williams, your legal and political resident expert, joined by the lovely Miss Jessica King. She is a producer with The Dish Nation and our comic extraordinaire, Mr. Nick Perdue. What up? So we're joined in studio today by a very special guest. This man was voted a fan favorite on his AMC hit show, The Walking Dead. He's a fan favorite with us here today. Welcome, Mr. Vincent M. Ward. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Yeah. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks so much for joining us. So we're going to jump right in. Okay. And we found out that you are a very accomplished athlete. Um, you know, at some point starting in every single high school basketball game you ever played in. That is quite a feat. You set a record for your high school for that. Yeah. And from what I hear, your high school was not too shabby. I mean, they were a very good team. Oh, yeah. We was beating people down all the time. Shots out trial with Madison Rams. I was the, uh, the first guy ever to start all four years. Absolutely. That's impressive. Right. How did you manage to stay healthy? Because that, you know, basketball injuries are common and really easy to happen. How'd you stay healthy? Um, made sure I didn't get fouled hard and made sure I <laughs> fouled other people hard. There you go. There you go. The word the on the street was. Right. Yeah, hit them before they hit you. There yeah. you go. And uh, you still play basketball every day. How does yeah. that um, keep you grounded? How does that help you with your acting? Well, not every day. I play on okay. like Wednesdays and Saturdays. Okay. And um, just, you know, I'm older. I got four grown grandkids so you know yeah. i'm just trying to just trying to stay a little healthy stay healthy great yeah. does that keep your mind and energy kind of focused too is it is it a nice physical outlet for you no when i turn no. the tv on that keeps me focused really yeah, when i see okay. stuff that i don't like or stuff that i do like it keeps me focused so i can go in you know in this game and try to take over just right. being patient love that love that and by the way looking great for four grandkids if i don't say Thank so you. myself Thank you very I, much. <laughs> I just got that out there um and also other than basketball do you have other physical things you know a lot of t uh, actors and actresses talk about their instrument and in aligned with the uh, mental and emotional parts of that you know they have um physical things yoga things they incorporate into their regime you, no you're I don't. not that guy no. no you know a lot of people say you know the instruments and yeah. reading a script i'm probably the only guy only actor ever not to read the entire script wow i only read neat. my part and focus on my part stay in your lane yeah so okay. you know a lot of my actor friends they hate it but if it's been working for me then why well, change it don't, whatever works don't don't break it if it's not broken yeah, yeah. awesome very cool yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, since you were a high school phenom, <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that fair to say, right? Uh, yeah, I'm starting in legendary, every day. legendary. Yeah. <laughs> so, because I mean, we, we know that you, you played a little bit in college, so did, I, or did you ever like want to go to the NBA? Like, was that a goal for you, or? Well, you know what it was. Um, I was known for basketball mm -hmm. and and dancing. I mm -hmm. uh, had a dance partner. We would win every dance contest. I'm 6'4", he was 6'5". Mm -hmm. Nobody can touch night and day. <laughs> and, you know, I honestly, I, I got probably uh, letters from every college, mm -hmm. but oh, that's not what I wanted to do right after high school. I wanted to tour with my rap group. We were signed on the same label with uh, Vanilla Ice, Ichaban Records. We was doing tours, and, you know, we were supposed to be going on Arsenio Hall back then. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's yeah. where my focus was. And then after it didn't pan out, you know, after, what, two years, a coach still called me and gave me a full scholarship to go to school in Chicago. Wow. Yeah, that's strong. Yeah. That's strong. So, but now, <clears throat> if, if you would have, you know, like really kind of, like, would have stayed that course, you think mm -hmm. you probably could have been, like, the LeBron James of your era, per se. <sighs> you know, coming out of Ohio, you could have been the, 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 the pre-game. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I, I invented the, the whole thing. <laughs> oh, <same. laughs> okay, okay. Who knows? Who knows? I, I did have a lot of people looking at me, but that's not what I wanted to do at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the dreams, of course, is always go to the NBA, 
But I had to be realistic. I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to no NBA. You got the Chris. Oh, this is the time you had Chris Webber and Jalen Rose and Jimmy Jackson. Right. We were all nominated to be uh, McDonald All Americans. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I was just honored to be nominated. But you know, it's a great company. Yeah. 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 Everything yeah. happens for a reason. Had it. Ended yes. up having a couple kids in high school. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so General Motors was calling me after a while. <laughs> Not real. Well, let's talk a little bit about your dancing career. Mm-hmm. You mentioned it briefly. Um, you toured with MC Hammer, Public Enemy, Heavy D. What was it like touring with some of the biggest names at that time? Well, it, it was funny because, I mean, no disrespect to our group, but our song sucked, yeah. <laughs> but we had a nice stage show. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you're the opening act, the, the arena's half full, and yeah, we just had fun. We were young, right. we were young, and I didn't realize what I was a part of because I was just having fun. Mm. And I was just like, okay, hey, Hammer, <laughs> hey, <laughs> Heavy D, you know, so right. definitely met some legendary people. Yeah, mm-hmm. is that kind of what started your love of performing? I believe so, because I never, I never thought about being an actor. You know, I sort of fell into it, but um, I always had the entertainer inside of me. Mm-hmm. And I think it came from basketball and dancing, because, you know, I used to dance on a basketball court. My coach hated it, <laughs> but I was the type of person I like to get the crowd just hyped, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, get them just what they call it, turned up. Turned. <laughs> That's what the kids call it. Right. right. <laughs> we was about it, about it then, though. Right. <laughs> so, That's funny. Yeah, so it's always been a part of me. Cool. That's awesome. Tell us this, the story of how you guys came up with your name for your group. He was dark and I was light. <laughs> I knew it. I, I, was like, I guarantee this is like so complex. And then when I'll be sure so night and day came out, uh, he's like, That's us. That's <laughs> us. So, yeah, I mean, we, we had so much fun. You know, I remember my first time staying out late. My parents said, don't come back in here late again. Mm-hmm. The very next weekend, man, my mom took me to this place. It's like, okay, so you want to stay out late? This is where you're going to stay now. And I never stayed out late. But then after she found out that, you know, we never drank, we never right. smoked, we just danced. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. what we was known for. And she's like, okay. I'm accepted a little bit. Vincent, where'd your dance passion come from? Is that something in your family, or you just had the moves? I never what? knew how to dance. Ah. And they used to always call me the mechanical man, because I used to always do the robot <laughs> the all the time. Yeah. And then I got tired of being the mechanical man, and so I started practicing. You know, when you was trooping and, you know, <laughs> cabbage patching, so I started practicing. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Very cool. So, now, you know, this extracurricular dance act activities. Do, do, do you and, you and your uh, childhood friend, Broderick, do you guys still, still do any random just kind of... You know what? Uh, I think he's in Utah somewhere. We actually don't talk, and I'm mm. upset about that because mm. it's like if you've been friends, if you've been brothers forever, mm. whatever little beef you had, mm. right. even now as adults, and I'm saying this to everybody that's listening and watching, life is too short. Right. Whatever yeah. beef you had with somebody that you consider your brother, because I never had a brother, mm. then leave it alone. Let it go. If it wasn't you did something to my mama or daddy or my kids or something, yeah. if it's something small, rekindle the fire. So, Brody Doom, as you out there, man, holla at me. I tried to holla at him before. Right. Mm. But, you know, as you get older, right. people separate. Yeah. Everybody's not supposed to go on that journey with you. Well, yeah, they yeah. say people are what, seasons, reasons, and lifetimes. But I, I second your, your your notion of it's nice when it's a lifetime. Yeah. It really is, especially for people that have been there from the beginning and yeah. been with you through development and all that. And so. seeing you grow and been there, sleeping in the same bed together, doing things yeah. together, seeing the world together. Yeah. yeah, those experiences you guys don't ever have with anybody else. And I can't go. I can't even go home without somebody asking me, mm-hmm. how's Broderick? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, right. so. Right. Broderick, if you're listening... Holler at your boy on Twitter. <laughs> you know, we, email, lo- something. We, we would like to be responsible for that reunion. Black Hollywood Live. Yeah. Make it happen. Seriously. It. Um, so speaking of, you talked about the success that the group had. You guys were signed to a major label at some point. Then, then you you went in different course. You, you went back to school when you got the scholarship. Mm-hmm. What prompted that decision? Were you, were you missing something or you just wanted to see what else was out there? Um... Uh, got tired of being broke. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Wait, it's the difference between a rapper and a dancer. Right. You know, after a while, it's like, okay, man, you got to do something with your life. Like I got said, it. I had, you know, I had a, my, you know, my daughter at 17, my son at 18. Right. So it's like, okay, I have to do something. Right. You know what I mean? So when the coach called, 
I was like, I'm out. Awesome. Well, I'm just curious. I know well, you had some time off in between your high school days and going back and playing collegiate ball. Was that a physical adjustment, getting used to that practice? No. No. We played. We, You're just honestly, like a machine. We, we right? played every day. <laughs> Doing nothing. You know, we yeah. would just sit at the house most of the time, and then it's like, okay, let's go play ball. Yeah. So we always played ball. Got it. You know, Broderick was probably one of my hardest Hardest people, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we even always even more play. reason to call Robert. <laughs> <laughs> he said he still got skills. What, what you got, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hollywood High School. Right. <laughs> That's funny. So, so you were in school for about two and a half years, and then you went back to Dayton. What was that choice like? What was that um, mental process like for you? Well, you know, growing up in the Midwest, one of the biggest jobs is working at General Motors. Sure is, yeah. You know, my dad worked there, my uncles worked there, and then I got an opportunity to work there. So instead of going back to school that following year, I ended up working at GM. Mm. And it was crazy about that. It's like I can see the road that God has taken me. Absolutely. Mm. Got hurt on the job at GM. Wouldn't allow me to come back. Whole time I'm like, you know, I got hurt here. What's mm -hmm. going on? Yeah. Started working at Champ Sports. Became the number one salesman in the district at Champ Sports, which m they moved me to Columbus, Ohio, mm. to be um, uh, assistant manager. One day, the general manager came. It's like, how far are you want to take it in the company? I said, I'd like to have a, uh, a position like yours one day. Fired. What? Wow. Fired the next wow. week. That mm. following week, went and saw my very first play. Mm. Fell in love with it. I'd never even seen a play in my life. And I sat there in that little theater, living the dream theater in Columbus, Ohio, and I said, I can do that. Maybe a week later, week later they had auditions for that same company. Mm. Went to audition, got a part. Guess who calls? Champs calls. I said, no, nah, you can mm. keep your job. Right. Yeah, I found something that I love to do. Right. I have to just ask this one last question, <clears> um, <throat> then we'll move on from this. I recently saw in an interview that Barry Gordy, uh, founder of Motown Music, gave. He worked for GM for a while, and he talked about how like seeing that assembly line process was very <sighs> instrumental in his business development. Mm -hmm. Did you share that? It or? taught me to be on time. Awesome. Yeah, because awesome. it's like, you don't be on time? You're going to be fired. Mm. It, and it made you just go. They made you work hard. Got it. You know, and I, I, I thank GM. I thank champs. Right. I thank them because if, if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be sitting right here. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Dayton, Columbus, actually back to Dayton, mm -hmm. to L.A. Because after after I did the movie Traffic and I'd done, mm -hmm. a, you know, a few other things in Columbus, I said, I'm moving to California. And my parents was like, what? <laughs> you don't even know anybody there. Mm -hmm. But watch how it happens. Right. Move back to Dayton, start doing security work, save my money. What happens? Get a check from General Motors. Wow. Came on out to wow. California. Wow, that's wow. amazing. So. Well, speaking of the <laughs> path cool. that you've taken, yeah. um, you have garnered some very prestigious titles. Mm -hmm. uh, Ebony Magazine's <laughs> Man of the Year. Yep, 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 a yep. sexiest man <laughs> of the year. <laughs> Bone chicka wow. He's yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get into modeling and, and going about these sexy titles? You know, in Columbus, you used to always have these different um, events, and you would have to win, you know, yeah. to go to the to the finals or whatnot. And by me knowing how to dance and be, a, you know, have the showmanship inside of me, I would win. And what the gift was. Every man of the year and so sexiest cool. ball head man of the year. <laughs> so, right. yeah, I used to entertain then people like, are you a stripper? I'm like, no, nah, I'm too shy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, yeah, it came down to that type of thing. Well, obviously, with those sorts of competitions, there's a lot of attention on you mm -hmm. and your looks. Are you comfortable with being seen as a sort of sex symbol? I'm cool with it, you know, if y'all think I'm sexy. I'm, yeah, I, th I'm I think right. he's okay with it, Jessica. I think he's cool with it. Yep. You know what, I'm, I'm cool with it, but I don't take it to, I don't have a big head about it. I just say no, thank right. you for the compliment. Mm -hmm. Even, yeah. like, I had a, I was helping a friend with her auditions the other day for this play that I got coming up called The Conversation okay. about domestic violence. And I told her I'd come and read, you know, with the girls or whatnot, because they're, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to be on the stage with me. Right. So I walk in, and I'm clean or whatnot. So this girl's <laughs> like, yeah, you look like a player or a, or a wife beater. What? You know what? what I told her? I said, thank you. You won't get the part. Right. <laughs> yeah, who says that? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, I was like, okay, and wow. sing. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly does a wife beater look like? There's yeah. a misconception for I you. I have no That's idea crazy. because I'll be the last one to do it because I love yeah. my freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way to get it. Yeah. Right. That is funny. Mm -mm -mm. Why did you stop modeling? It was just something fun to do. Mm -hmm. Somebody would ask, you know, you want to do a fashion show or whatnot. I'm like, all right, cool. And then I'll always do like extra stuff, bring out roses from wherever and hand it to the ladies and uh, just having fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about fun <laughs> with me. You know, if you can't have fun and laugh, then I'm probably not the person you want to be around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, would you still walk a runway today, though? I'll, like, I'll, hey, I'll, you still got it? I'll pose. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Duly the 360 noted. Part, right. No turn. The slow turn. <laughs> Give us your best I'm Zoolander coming. right now, like. My best Zoolander. You're modeling. Yeah. 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 Work, Vincent. Work. <laughs> 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 nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm staying in my lane. Okay, acting, right. acting. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now speaking of acting, because we know that you, you didn't you didn't start acting until like a little later on in mm -hmm. your in your career. You're on like the typical 18 year old out of college and mm -hmm. right into acting. So did it kind of take you a little while to find your groove, or you know what? After I did the movie Traffic, it was like you couldn't tell me nothing. Mm. <laughs> you know, I did the movie Traffic. The first thing I did was an independent film. Um, I did some plays, and then like like I said, I decided to come out here. But sometimes God got to humble you, too. Yeah. You know, I came out here and it was like nothing was happening. But I have a story. The movie Traffic came out, went to the premiere. My scene took, pla took place when Michael Douglas was driving through the neighborhood looking for his daughter. Now, mm -hmm. my, my um, character was named The Face. Mm -hmm. So I was supposed to stop him and confront him like, what you doing in my hood? So me and my mom and dad, we told everybody, oh, watch no. out for Vincent. He no, with no, Michael no. Douglas yeah. mm -hmm. at the premiere. He's driving. He drives right past me. Mm -hmm. oh. Cut my scene, Cut out. scene out. I'm sitting there devastated. Mm. Kept my name in the credit as guy on the street. I went to Steven Soderbergh after the premiere. I'm hurt. You know, I'm not knowing any better because mm -hmm. this is my first time doing something big. I said, hey, man, why you cut my part out? <laughs> He looked at me like, whoa, whoa uh, well, Vince, um, it happens. Um, you know, we had to pay Michael up front. And, you know, he saw that I was hurt. He said, but I'm working on a new movie. He said, he wrote down his number. He said, tell him, you know, I told him to give you a call. And he gave me a part at Ocean's Eleven. Very cool. Nice. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> so here we are at Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> Sitting there, you know, me and the guy, we're supposed to be having a conversation. It's when uh, Matt Damon and George Clooney slid down the elevator shaft, opened the door, slid the gas pedal, and knocked the guards out. Mm. Okay, now they're playing music on top of my voice. Mm. So I said, that'll never happen to me again. Bring it down the house, Kane. I only supposed to have two words. When I tell you, I added like 15 words <laughs> on top of that joint. And, I mean, you ain't supposed to do that, but you know, I took a chance and it worked. Everything that I, I added, they kept. Wow. That's awesome. So, yeah. Wow. Well, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything about Soderbergh, but <laughs> really nice but, guy. Yeah, really nice he's guy. a he's, he's a nice guy. But now, like, did you have to play like catch up though? You know, you know, like because you said like, you you added you know a little, little extra dialogue mm -hmm. and bringing down the, the house though. Mm -hmm. But like, like, did you did you really like did it take you a little time to really kind of get your footing or was well, it? Well, you know what, becoming doing extra work, I knew that's not what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh uh. I need to be where they are, right there. Yeah. And then I end up um, doing stand-in work on the show Girlfriends, oh, okay. uh, which is that. funny because the, the the play I just told you guys about, about the domestic violence, Jill Marie is Jones. playing my girlfriend now. Oh, nice. <laughs> Full circle. Yeah, yeah so cool. I did that for four years, and one of the guys, you know, I was still doing, like, little, little stuff, and one of the PA guys was like, I'm going to a new show called Everybody Hates Chris. You, you know, because you, me being 6'4", a lot of the people I couldn't stand in for. Right. Mm -hmm. So going to Everybody Hates Chris, yeah. Terry, Terry Crews, Cruz. Cruz. Yeah. 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 which is like my brother now. So I worked there awesome. for four years, and I'm probably the only guy in stand-in history that had a stand-in because they knew that, you know, I was doing my own thing. Right. And I remember Terry telling me one time, it was the fourth fourth year, he said, if we come back next year, I don't want you to come back and be my stand-in. He said, you're too talented to be my stand-in. Lovely. And I was like, I'm, I was like, man, I appreciate it, but in my mind, I was saying, I wasn't coming back. <laughs> you know, seriously, yeah. straight up. I wasn't coming back because I would start doing other stuff, yeah. and other mm -hmm. stuff, and other stuff. And a lot of times, the stand-ins on, stand on, on mm -hmm. that show were better than the people that they were hired. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of times, you see us playing different characters. Um, Oscar McFarland, Diamond Cook, 
you know, we were, we took it serious. Mm -hmm. And I always told them, we're going to do these parts like it's our parts because each, each week we have a different director. Mm -hmm. So I felt like it was an audition. Opportunity, yeah, yeah for to these. display your talent. And a lot of times yeah. those directors went to remember. other shows, but they remembered us. Mm -hmm. right. So sometimes you just got to take advantage of the situation that you're in, and that's what I did. I like that, too. And I, I like <clears throat> the sentiment um, that you said, even though you got the validation from Terry Crews, and I'm sure mm -hmm. that felt great, but in your head, you already knew. You already had a plan to exit. I think I that's know. important, Vincent. Can you talk about where that confidence come, comes from for you to get outside your comfort zone? Because I think a lot of people in acting, but also just other professions, they get in a comfort zone, a space that feels safe and secure, and you know a check is coming or whatever. How do you break yourself of that? Because I want to be one of the greats. And the thing is, is like, be patient. Be patient. Your time is coming. But you still give, I don't care if it's a student film, independent film, a small play, you still give these people 100% of you. Mm -hmm. And that means being on time, don't come with no ego, have your lines together. And a lot of times I saw, saw things, I'm like, I wouldn't do that. I would mm -hmm. never do that. But I wasn't going to hate, I wasn't going to say anything. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm staying in my lane. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I would say be ready so you don't have to get ready. Mm -hmm. If somebody like Vincent, we need you. All right, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. What's happening? So I think that's, I, I took that from, you know, from girlfriends, I took it from, you know, everybody hates Chris and Jim. There you go. You know, my past experience is just, if you don't want to go back in time, make it work you for your it, future. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's invaluable. That's great. So you told us a little bit briefly about how you kind of had that pivotal moment where you went to that play, mm -hmm. you saw it after the things weren't working out job-wise, and <coughs> you decided, I can do that, I will do that. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the play? It must have been an amazing play it that was, gave you all that. It was, he actually did, like, several different plays and okay. it was all educational plays right. black man rising our young black men are dying no right. one seems to care the people who shoot uh who shoot the guns um, stuff like that and we would mm -hmm. go like different colleges and you know just do educational plays for people his right. name was james chapman you know may he rest in peace okay. but he gave me an opportunity and he also taught me something i don't know what was going on i would start you know he had his company but I want to break loose. Mm -hmm. And I started doing other stuff. And uh, I, remember, I remember us being in line at this college and I was over here, James and another lady was over here and that lady said, that guy's gonna be a great actor one day. And James looked, at, looked and said, who him? Now I can hear everything he's doing, <laughs> everything he's saying. And he's like, yeah, he is tall, isn't he? And the lady said, I didn't say anything about his height. I said he was gonna be a great actor. And I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget mm -hmm. him saying, you know what, Vince, sometimes people get parts because the way that they look. And he walked away. And I'm like, it's time for me to go get away from you because you're starting to hate now. Yeah. You want to control so much. Put it in a box. Yeah, yeah. control everybody that's in your, staying in your house because he had an actor's house. Mm -hmm. And he had his own house. So I'm like, I can't be controlled. Got it. So I said, it's time for me to go. And that kind of goes again to that notion of breaking out of a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. That was your initial training ground, but then you, you weren't afraid to go up beyond. I think that's yeah. fantastic. And, and, even, and even to move out here and not know anybody. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, only person I knew, and they lived in San Diego, was Broderick. Oh. No. It was Broderick and his wife. And I had no clue how far San Diego was from, from here. <laughs> Woo, and I had to explore. I'm like, man, all my little $10,000 from GM is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, while so. you were touring with your troupe, um, did everyone in the troupe bring a distinct difference and have a specific role that they always played well, or was there ever any budding of heads over who would play which role? You know what? You're talking about in the, in the rap group, or? No, with your with the plays. Oh, with the plays? Um, nah, I knew I was always going to be the bad guy, because I was <laughs> bigger than everybody else, and you know, my voice could be a little intimidating until I smile. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we pretty much knew James was in charge. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, go here. That's where we went. And that was it. And plus, I was a little older than the other people, too. So <clears throat> Very cool. So I was a daddy. <laughs> 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 Got to have that fraternal role. I love that. That's good. So you mentioned how the titles of some of this work, you know, young black men dying, people don't care, uh, black men rising, very conscious titles, like you said, educational plays, messaging themes. Is that something you still look for in your work? I, I would do it. Yeah. I would definitely do it because that's where I started. Right. How can I turn my back on some somewhere that I started? Right. So, yeah, if somebody 
Mm-hmm. I just want to act. Got it. I just want to work. Got but it. I'm not going I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to mm-hmm. chase. I'm not going to kiss your butt. I'm not going to do any of that. And one thing that a lot of directors, producers, executive producers have to realize, stop with all the fronting. Mm-hmm. Stop wasting people's time. If you don't have it together, then don't even mention it. Come when you have everything together. Because mm-hmm. then after a while, I'm looking at you like, okay, how many times are you going to tell me this? Credibility this is, yeah, shot. Yeah. This is yeah. second or third time. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. Right. And it's not about what I've been in or anything like that. Right. I've learned that your time is precious. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, you mentioned Conversations, the play you're currently working on with Joe Marie Jones. Mm-hmm. It, obviously having uh, domestic violence themes through it. it. Is that something that does it bring you some purpose beyond performance? I guess that's my question. Uh, is that important to you to have something beyond? It's, it's, most, it's most definitely important okay. because it's something that's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully somebody can see this and say, I'm not going to take that from my husband or my boyfriend or even my wife or girlfriend anymore. Right. You know, domestic violence is real. And uh, Tasha Biltmore, she definitely done a great job with it. And we performed the play in January. Uh, but Jill wasn't a part of it, but we were going to perform it in October, which okay, she'll be great. a part of it. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we'll have, you have to give us more information yeah, about most that definitely. then. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, let's talk about this super secretive audition that uh, <laughs> that, uh, that you went went through. And so, you know, this this audition, essentially, it was for The, the Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then so, you know, because we we know that they it gave you this this character name with those fake name. They gave Ouch. you a fake line. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so what was that like? Like, what, Tell us about that process about going in for something that you thought was one thing and it like bait and switch. It was totally something different. I didn't know. I had no clue mm-hmm. until I got to the set and this other guy's like, we were just like, well, who are you? I was like, I'm Mouse. I was, he's like, wait a minute, I'm Mouse. I'm like, what the hell going on? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we were looking and then that's when we were told everything was secret. But a lot mm-hmm. of shows are starting to do that mm-hmm. because a lot of people are leaking, leaking yeah. stuff, which yeah. is to me, it's not cool. Why would you leak something? First of all, and jeopardize your job yeah. right. and right. get sued. But tell the fans what's going on. Right. A lot of times people want to know what's going on, say they want to know what's going on, but they really don't want to know. They yeah. want to be shocked. They want to be yeah. surprised. And that's something that I would, I would never do. I would never leak anything. Right. You know, I know better. Mm-hmm. Well, I've heard you talk a lot of, uh, about professionalism <clears throat> in different capacities, and I think that's certainly what that's getting to as well, you know, the integrity. Take right. it seriously, yeah. yeah. Right. And plus, I didn't even know what The Walking Dead was. <laughs> right. I was like, okay. I didn't realize how popular the show was until, yeah. honestly, until I stopped working on it. Right. Yeah. You know, when I had 900 Twitter fans in October <laughs> and in almost 8,000 now, I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, Oscar, we love you. Oscar, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> what about Vincent? Did you <laughs> well, what so, was that like for you once you fully grasped how big of a deal this show was and how many diehard fans there were? <sighs> I think it hit me when I started going to these different conventions. Right. Mm. And when this lady came up to me and was crying, I'm like, huh? I had to look around and see, you know, what, actually, why why are you crying? She's like, because I I finally got to meet you. And then, you know, people tell you all the things that you've been in and they go on your website and they Google you. It could be overwhelming and it could be a little scary too. (laughs) You know, and I just be looking at them like. Yeah. So, but yeah, the the love that I've been receiving from the show has been, it's been great. You they know, don't call it, you a fan favorite for nothing. It's serious yeah. it's business. I, 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 I would have never realized. Right. I would have never known because I don't think about that stuff. Yeah. I just go in and just try to do a great job. You know, yeah. like I said, once again, be on time, have your lines together, just be a true professional. Right. Well, not being an initial viewer of the show before you auditioned for it, how did you prepare <laughs> for that role of Oscar? just like I would prepare for any other role to handle your business, Mm. you know, to be, to be great at what you do. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me one time, were you intimidated by the other actors? I said, why? I said, I'm a professional actor as well. Mm. They've never heard of me. I've never heard of them. Mm -hmm. Most of the people on the walking dead has definitely really and truly got their shine because of the walking dead. I mean, I think Norman Reedus, uh, Reedus, Got yeah, his shine from uh, the Boondock Saints, but everybody else was really practically new. So, 
No, I wasn't yeah. intimidated. Why? No. No. Love this no. confidence. It's great. Yeah, yeah no, no it's, it's important. Yeah. Now, and and you know, speaking of that, because we know that The Walking Dead has an incredible fan base, and you know, the, the comic has been around for years. So, was there any pressure, you know, playing a character, you know, and getting into a franchise that has such a big spotlight on it? Never even knew about the comic books. Somebody just gave me a comic book. I had never even read the comic book. Ah. So I just went in there, like this was another job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't. I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> so it, was, it, was, it was just just like a regular and, old... And my character really w wasn't too far from who I really am. Yeah. Oscar, yeah. you know, he had a family, you know, he had kids, got a gun pulled on him. I had a gun pulled on me before, mm -hmm. you know, but I was pretty much playing myself. That's how I am, you know, caring, loving, humble, help anybody. And that's how my character was on The Walking Dead. And then now, like, was was it hard to kind of break into like the the family? I would say that, that the actors have created you know, on The Walking no. Dead, or it was like it was a nice set where Let they me tell you welcomed something. you. This was probably the nicest cast, crew, wow. producers ever. Andrew Lincoln, Rick. He said something to me. I need you. You need me. Let's go. That's all you need to say to me. I'm like, boy, I'm hyped now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm hyped. And it was like it was like a family. There was no egos. It was nothing like that. Yeah. Everybody brought their A game, so you know you better bring your A game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like Irony e. Singleton. He played T-Dog. He was only supposed to do two episodes the first season. This, he's on his third season. Yeah. I always look at it like you never know if they're going to bring you back or not. Not even just on The Walking Dead. I'm talking about period. Right. I just did the show, um, an episode of Wilford came on last night. Mm. You never know. Mm -hmm. It's about a dog. I'm a mailman. Who knows? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I always try to look at the big picture. And um, until then, I just, until they give you that call back, I just sit there and chill. Yeah. Well, to the dismay of many, uh, <laughs> Your character, Oscar, and his sidekick, Axel, were killed off the show. Mm -hmm. And then in the season finale, there was also a huge surprise when Andrea was killed off the show as well. Uh, do you think that those characters' absence maybe had something to do with Glenn Mazzara leaving the show? Um, I don't think so. You know, when I first signed my contract, they told me seven to eight episodes. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I'm hoping... To the end of the season. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, if they tell you that, then, you know, he was still there. Mm -hmm. He was still there. But I was told at the beginning, you probably do seven to eight, seven to eight episodes. I ended up doing seven. Okay. So I don't think he really had anything to do with it. Like I said, everybody was really nice. I think the problem happened when people started liking me and Axel. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't speak for, you know anybody else. I can only speak for myself and Lou, Lou Temple, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we became really good friends. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it's like, okay, if these people are liking them. How do we get rid of them? <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know taking one to the side. <sighs> well, to that thing, <laughs> It initially, so you tell us now the with, when you signed your contract, you were told up front seven or eight episodes. But the script was kind of open, right? So that you possibly could have, like you said, anything could have happened. Right. Then a little birdie told me that maybe some co-stars might have thrown a little shade your way. Any thoughts on that? Oh, if they did, I never. No, uh, no, no. I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't, I never thought that. Okay. So you think it's all they, by they better not have. <laughs> and, and there we go again with that. <laughs> yep. Yep. He told y'all. Okay. Right. Who knows? Who knows? I don't yeah. put anything past anybody. You right. never right. ever yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I just stick to what I'm supposed to do, and whatever happens, it's gonna happen. Awesome. awesome. Well, like you mentioned, you and your co-star Lou Temple, who played Axel, are really close. And of course, when you guys were, were killed off, a lot of fans were really upset. And a lot of fans were saying that they wanted you guys to continue this relationship, whether it be a spinoff mm -hmm. or maybe an entirely different show. Have there been any talks about that on your end? Yeah, me and Lou talked about it. <laughs> 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 but it's, what's crazy is like, we were probably on our second or third episode, and I'm like, man, I really like this guy. And then I started thinking about Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor right. and Danny Glover and uh. Mel Gibson, and I can see us doing something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
Lou is a great actor. Even the episode when I could have shot uh, Rick and I did the gun twist. Mm -hmm. Lou Flipped is the one. Over. Yeah, Lou is the <laughs> one who taught me how to do that because he does a lot of westerns, which you can catch him July third on. Um, uh, God, what's the new movie that's coming out? Uh, with Tonto and oh yeah, oh, with Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp. Yeah, um, Tonto. Yeah, Lewis in that Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger. Yeah. Lone Ranger. Yeah. So yeah, I can definitely see me and Lou doing something like that. You know, I'm ready. He's ready. Yeah, I think people always love those dynamic duos like that. Mm -hmm. I, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Cool. So I think the only thing, the only problem I really had about my death mm -hmm. is it just seemed like it just came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like this is where we get rid of them. Bow, shoot them right there. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What is, where did this come from? Right. I went to save them. Right. Yeah. No and build up. Just got yeah. shot. But mm -hmm. you know, I can honestly say that you know, I think they didn't show me get shot in the head, and I didn't get bit by a zombie. So who knows? <laughs> they saw her know. shoot. Mm. But they didn't see me get shot in the head. Based on the relationships that you formed with your castmates, was that a really hard exit for you mm. from the set and everything? Yeah, it was. Mm. It was, and it made me feel good that these people were sad, mm -hmm. you know. For instance, um, when I was got shot in the side, when I did this, that was the sign for it to blow up. Mm -hmm. And it was it was tough. I'm not going to lie. I sat there and I cried a few mm -hmm. times, you know, because I knew that my parents are start enjoying the show. I knew a lot of people started enjoy, enjoying the show, and I started. Mm -hmm. And when it didn't go off, because everybody was, I mean, everybody had moved up and was watching because it was like this was the end of, you know, of Oscar. And then when it didn't go off, I jumped on top of the bus. I said, like, it's a miracle. <laughs> Oscar's supposed to stay. Right, so aside. everybody just started laughing. It broke the ice a little bit. But, mm -hmm. you know, they definitely made me feel like part of the family. That's cool. That's and that's the hardest thing about leaving the show because those were some good people. Everybody yeah. were, was really nice. So. Yeah. Now, speaking of good people, <laughs> uh, uh -oh. we know that uh, <laughs> these fans can be a little crazy, like zombie fans. Like, they have their own little cult, you know, crazy click, mm -hmm. right? And so have you had any crazy fan zombie experience besides the lady that was crying when she, when she <laughs> met you? Um, just online, you know, okay. people say stuff, but not face-to-face, because -face, when they see me, they be like, oh, my God, you're a lot bigger than what I thought you were. Mm -hmm. uh, or... It's it's funny because <laughs> <laughs> on the show I was always dirty. I always had you know the jumper jumpsuit mm -hmm. on, and then like a lot of the women, I was like, oh my god, you look way better in person than right. you did on the show. So I think that sort of. And then you say, did you know I was Ebony's man of the year? <laughs> <laughs> show you right. <laughs> did you hear my CD? Orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you know once I stand up or once I you know shake the hand or smile, people yeah. are more relaxed and then they just look at me as being Vincent or Oscar from The Walking Dead and they chill out a little bit. Mm. So I think my height and my voice makes them back down. Kind of kind of soothes it over. Yeah. Over there, right? yeah. yeah. Now, I can, you know, you said that you've also attended a lot of these zombie conventions and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Now, do you just go like as you, Vincent, or do you go like as Oscar? Have nah. you gone as like a character? I just go in as myself because at the end of the day, I'm Vincent. I'm not Oscar anymore. Mm. But I'm, I'm there and it's not a zombie convention. It's just a convention. You got Michael Myers there. Mm -hmm. You got Jason. You got the people, the, the very first Jason. You mm -hmm. got the voice of Chucky. You got a whole bunch of different people that's there. Mm -hmm. You know, Billy D. Williams, some old wow. wrestlers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just a lot of people because a lot of times you'd be like, well, I wonder what happened with such and such. Mm -hmm. How are they surviving? Yeah. A lot of them surviving mm -hmm. at these conventions. There yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'd be so, I mean, I saw George Animal Steel from the back from the, you know, the WWF days yeah. and, wow. you know, it really made me feel good to see these people and, and, and for these people to be like, I love your work on the show. Mm -hmm. That gets me right there, man. It's for somebody who's on a show saying they love my work on the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's just like I just uh, filmed the show Psych. Yes. And sure. um, that was my first time ever getting an offer. You know, the offer, it means you didn't have to audition. Yeah. Oh. I'm like, what? Wow. Huh? When well, my agent, <laughs> when my manager, uh, my manager Alex, he's probably listening right now. What's up, Alex? Shout I call out. him Shout my, out to Alex, yeah, right? I call him, I call him my Jerry Maguire. There you yeah. go. Man, I always wanted somebody like that that believed in me in yeah. my corner. Mm. So when he called me and told me that, I was shocked. 
and it's because of The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think The Walking Dead is definitely going to open up more doors for me. Yeah. Um, I shot a movie with Tony Todd. Uh, wow, Candyman. Candy Candy yeah. You know, Live Evil. Mm -hmm. And um, I know it's all because of The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. So you, as you mentioned, grandfather four, and they are far away. Is that tough? Is that, how, how do you deal with that? You know what? It's, it's crazy because now they're starting to talk. They're all small. <laughs> and they called me Paw Paw. And I, the first time she called me Paw Paw, I looked at her like, who are you talking to? Right. I'm like, so you being disrespectful. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's they call funny. me Grand Pimpin. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. And like the last time I was home, this, which was this past weekend, okay. just did a play, another play. Yes, yeah, This past theater weekend uh, called Playing by Life Rules. And it's <laughs> we out there having a good time, playing in a jumper, running around. And the next day, they get caught in a fire. Mm. Little boy was in their apartment building uh, playing with matches. Mm -hmm. And it hit me because I could have that, you know, that Thursday we're having a good time. Right. Friday, they could have been dead. Mm -hmm. That whole apartment building burned down. So, wow. yeah. Wow. So it hit me hard. You know, it's like, man, that's why I, keep, I always say mm -hmm. life is too short. Thank life God is, they're okay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And um, yeah, so like moments like that, does that make you as a father and a grandfather more aware of your own mortality and mm -hmm. make you more appreciative, you think, of, of every moment? Most definitely. Absolutely. You know, even even when I'm driving down the street and I see somebody laying on the sidewalk, you know, I just really and truly thank God that that's not me mm -hmm. or somebody that I know. And, you know, I feel sorry for them, but it's just like that could be me. That could right. be somebody I know. Yeah. You know, and that's why before I go to sleep and when I wake up, I just thank God for another day. Because mm -hmm. I've had a lot of friends die mm -hmm. or get killed. And it's like, that could have been me. Right. You know, I just had two just get killed recently that went to my high school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I never take anything for granted. And I try not to burn. I ain't going to say I try not to. I don't burn bridges. You know, I don't try to, I don't put myself in a situation that somebody can try to come back and get me. Because mm -hmm. we watch enough of these shows where you got snapped or you got the Fatal Attraction shows. And mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to hurt me or my family. Right. So, you know, the women that's married or got a <laughs> girlfriend, you know, right. you know, you, the girl's got a boyfriend or whatnot. Don't come my way. That's not clear. Right. No yeah. way. He only dates single women, ladies. Exactly. <laughs> you heard yeah, it here first. That's right. right. You're not going to put me in a situation where he'd be knocking at my door right. or be waiting in the bushes. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> that's uh, real. Nah, I'm cool on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You were in a music video for Master P. <laughs> yeah. To my daddy. Speaking of dads, what was that experience like for you? Uh, letter to my daddy. We actually just did it two weeks ago. It oh. took a week to shoot. I mean, what, two or three days? And then the next couple of days, that it was got on, posted quick. on 106 and Park. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, my man, Hawk, he does a lot, of, um, a lot of videos or whatnot. And he gave me a call. You know, I... I was like, all right, cool, because I'd already been saying I wanted to do a music video. And um, he just made it happen. It was just him and us. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, nowadays when you got these little Canon cameras, right? man. So quick. Do yeah, wonders. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, well, was, it was fun. It was fun. You know, it was something great for Father's Day for me. Yeah. You know, for my dad or whatnot. So The lyrics to the song are very touching. How did that affect you as a father, as a grandfather? Was that part of the reason that inspired you? To <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep it all the way 100. Yes, so. my favorite. We're filming. Uh, we're just filming, filming. I'm like, wait a minute. I even heard the song. <laughs> I said, dude, can I at least hear the song? <laughs> the Hilarious. whole time he's just telling me how to act it out. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, I would like to hear the song one day. And mm -hmm. then I finally heard it. I finally really, you know, I heard it. But I really listened to it when I saw the video. So mm. and then that's when it was, you know, really touching for me. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> what is the biggest difference between working on a music video and working for television? Um, television and everything is more. Faster paced. Yeah, yeah. It's, this time, you know, time is money because you got a whole bunch of people that's right. waiting. You know, got a whole bunch of people you got to pay with the video. It was just me and him. Uh, come over about 3.30. All right. <laughs> Sitting around talking. 
like, uh, traffic time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's that GM and you like, right, uh, right. Uh, Everything is more organized, <laughs> yeah. organized, but, you know, he still, he did a great job. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a, it's a great, it's a great video. Yeah. Now, because you briefly talked about the uh, stage play, uh, playing by life's rules. Mm -hmm. And so we know that on your Facebook page that you didn't really talk about it. So was there anything that, uh, that happened? Because you said you're no longer attached to the, to the project. Oh, no, what it, what it, no, what it was is, um, well, I was supposed to be doing it in D.C. Okay. As okay. well at the theater awards. And, you know, everybody's in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Everybody in that cast is in Ohio. Mm -hmm. So they're renting a bus to go to, you know, to D.C. And I'm here. And, you know, flights can be expensive. Yes, Flights absolutely. can be expensive. I'm not saying I'm going to charge your arm and leg. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people always say you got to crawl before you can walk. I've already crawled. Mm hmm I want to see everybody succeed, and I'm not all, I'm not about money, but at the same time, your time is precious, and you got to get paid for all the stuff that you have worked on back in the day and worked up to now. So, make a well, long story short, I'm not in a budget. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, which yeah. which you know what? She's still my girl. She's still my girl. When she mm -hmm. asked me to do her very first play, I was there. Right. I looked at it like this is somebody who's trying. Mm -hmm. You know, she got her stuff together. I'm there for you. Yeah. And if I, you know, when I believe in somebody, I've done a whole bunch of stuff for free. Trust me mm -hmm. when I tell you. And, you know, I kept on saying, I'm going to get away from that. I'm going to get away from that. I'm going to get away from that. But it's my heart. Yeah. It's my heart. When I, when I, when I believe in you, then I, you know, I work with you on there. How do you set those boundaries for yourself, though, Benson? Because I think for viewers and people listening and watching, that's difficult no matter what your industry. Uh, when you have a professional relationship with people and then also a personal one to some degree, a friendship or what have you, um, but then you have to think about what makes sense. You yeah. know, um, how do you set that boundary for yourself? <sighs> I guess the conversation. <laughs> you know, just yeah. listening to the conversation and how they pitch it. Got it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like. Are they giving me a bunch of BS or are they really speaking from the heart? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I want to see you face to face. Hmm. You know, I want to see if you're a better actor or actress than me. Because then I can tell if you're giving me some BS. <laughs> 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 then it's That's up to me to funny. say yay or nay. Mm -hmm. so. makes, makes sense. So you were recently figured, will be featured on the July issue of Designer Original Magazine. And uh, it's called the Red Hot Summer issue with Vincent Ward. Mm -hmm. How were you chosen as the uh, cover star? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Once again. Um, young lady named Yvonne, she, uh, no, I take that back. I take that back. I know how. Um, it was the, and I think it was the NAACP Awards. Okay. I um, did an interview on the, uh, on red, the carpet. red carpet, mm -hmm. and um, the guy, he was like, you know, we have our magazine. You know, I hear this all the time. Mm -hmm. He said, we have a magazine that we're working on, you know, whoop de whoop whoop de whoop I said, okay. <laughs> and then we left it alone. And then, like, later on, I saw him, and something just told me, give him your card. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. gave him my card, and now... We're here. And on now the you're on the cover of a magazine. Cover Boom. of the magazine. And so. we definitely clicked. The young lady, um, her name is Yvonne. She, she's definitely passionate. I'm all about passion. When you mm -hmm. have a passion and love for something, that's how I am. I'm passionate about stuff. And that's how she was. And I was like, you know, she's like, I don't know if we can afford it. I was like, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just, let's just make it happen. Lovely. Nice. And so, you know, well. On the cover. Now he's a cover, the cover. He's a cover boy. Yeah. And I just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> got it. I just got a, I just got a um, email the other day for, you know, the trading cards. Mm -hmm. well, my manager hit me up, and um, they're making an Oscar trading card. Wow. Oh. Yeah. So I was like, really? Yeah. Talk about branding. Yeah. That's, that's so cool for your brand, though. But I'm seeing you here. I can't help but notice you're on trend with your seasonal white jeans and whatnot. <laughs> um, <laughs> shout out to the white jeans. Are you? Are you a fashion guy? Is that something that's kind of, you know? You I like to I like to get clean a little yeah, bit. I was okay. working with a company called Stephen Land Clothing. Okay. And a lot of times when you see like the fancy shirts and the ties and the hanky and the, you know, the hand, I was about to say the cuff handcuffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cuff Taking it back to Dave. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's from Stephen Land. So, yeah. you know, okay. I like to I like to I like to would Be you, clean. um, could we foresee maybe a partnership and maybe a Vincent M. Ward fashion I want to, Yeah, stars? I would definitely yeah. would love to do something like that. You know, yeah. I always tell people on Twitter and uh, 
Facebook Rise and Grind, you know, mm -hmm. and I made some Rise and Grind and shirts, shirts and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So, but when I say Rise and Grind, it's it's really people need to get up, rise, and grind. Right. Yeah. It's not just a saying, it's a way of life for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I don't care if you, you got to do something to better your life or better your family's life or just make somebody smile. You know, somebody could be having a hard day. You know, if you could just make them smile, you know, you mm -hmm. never know. You might have made their day. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. you got to rise and grind. Very cool. Are you a hat guy? Sorry, last fashion <laughs> question. Um, I used to wear hats. Okay. I used to wear hats, yes. like the Godfather hats. Right. Yeah. I, I wore, a, I have a picture from, uh, I did the, the show Army Wives. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what's funny is every time I'm all, when I'm casted as a bad guy, it's like, okay. But then when I get there, they're like, we got to put a do-rag on him. we got to put a hat yeah, on him. Harden you up a bit. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. even when I did uh, Tyler Perry's House of Pain last year, they put a do-rag on me. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. you know, the hat's, I guess. Thug it up me. a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. thug, this, this yeah. gangster over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I've learned from this interview is that you are a very talented man. Uh, we've talked about your acting, of course. We've talked about modeling, dancing, basketball. The list goes on. Do you plan to incorporate any of your previous talents into your acting career? Um, I think about writing. I, I actually wrote a um, I wrote a couple of scripts. I wrote uh, a Bad Boys Tale, Choosing Heaven and Hell. It's like mm -hmm. an independent film. Um, no, I take that back. That's a play. Got it. Okay. Uh, I wrote a, a script called Choose Your Weapon. It's about choices. About a guy who. You know, started off in a church, but the money wasn't coming because he was a pastor, and so mm -hmm. he thinks he wants needs to go to the streets or whatnot. But at the end of the day, God be like, okay, go on. take that hedge away, away from around you and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So of course he had to go back, and I wrote one about um, homeless in L.A., a documentary. So. You know, we'll, see. Yeah. we'll see. Would you ever revisit any of your past careers, like dancing or? I still Basketball. like to do the butterfly every <laughs> now and then, big head bounce. <laughs> right now, I'm just really focused on the acting. That's, That's great. it. I want my my goal is to have uh, my own series or be starring on somebody's series. Mm -hmm. and, be there the entire time. Yes. Right. Not well, just that's... seven episodes, even though I'm grateful for it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Grateful for it, but I want to be on there all the time. I want to be on the commercial, on the billboard. Mm -hmm. I want to help push the show. No doubt. That's certainly within your future. I think we all know that. Okay, so we're going to have fun for a second. Okay. I'm going to play a game with you. Uh, this game is about famous dancers turned big time Hollywood A-listers, okay? Okay. So Sound I'm gonna, familiar? Right, right, right. I wonder why we're playing this game with you, Vincent. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple of clues okay. and then you're gonna guess who I'm talking about, okay? okay? This first actor, I'm gonna use that gender mm -hmm. neutral, mm -hmm. no cheating, okay? Mm -hmm. This first actor, um, she's, she's a mogul. She she's fragrant. She just gave Jennifer away Lopez? my name. Yeah, 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 you did. You <laughs> well, just I got did, a star. I did. Did yeah. she just get a star yeah, on Hollywood? I did. <laughs> I did. She didn't just get a star on Hollywood today. Okay. Well, Jennifer Lopez, former <laughs> in living Trump. color. Right, right, okay. right. Fly Jennifer girl. Lopez. Yes, yeah, Jennifer Lopez. Ding, that was ding, ding, too ding, ding, easy. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Let, let me go way harder in the paint on this one. Okay. Okay. This is an actor. Okay. This actor nominated for an Academy Award. He starred with everyone, um, Denzel Washington. He starred with, um, oh, he was in uh, Ocean's Eleven and all the, all the subsequent ones. Don Cheeto. Yes. No. There you go. Wow. Do you guys remember this? He's, he's yeah, in a hip-hop Don video. Don Cheeto. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, this next gentleman, uh, he's currently starring in a action summer blockbuster thriller. He's also been known to take his shirt off for a few dollars for the ladies. Um, oh. He's, uh, there oh, we go. There that? That's the stripper music. Oh, this is the game show music. Oh. Ticket. Yeah, this gentleman uh, is. He's in a movie with uh, Jamie Foxx right he now. He is, and his, <laughs> name, his name is. Oh, God, uh, chat on. Uh, uh, cl close, Mike. very close. Oh, man. Hey, I forgot his name. You can call him Dear John. You can call him Dear John. Uh, or, or Magic Mike. We'll accept Magic Mike. Yeah, I just watched him on Magic Mike. Mike. Okay, that's Chan M. Tatum. Yeah, Chan All right, thank you. Yeah. All right, and last but not least, this gentleman is just, his career has taken off in the last year and a huge, well, two years in a huge way. Probably one of the most talked about ABC series uh, it's got a huge following, huge Twitter Scandal, following. Columbus Short. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's like the Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Is this this the Price is Right? Yeah. yeah. I was on the Price is Right 2002, and I won $10,000 wow. with Bob Barker. Wow. Yeah. That's Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. Hold on. Let me tell you something funny. So a couple, few of my friends that came out from, from Columbus, Ohio, they all got on. We had just won the Rose Bowl, um, Ohio, State, Ohio State Buckeyes. And it's like, yeah, we're coming out there for the Price is Right. You want to go? I was like, man, they ain't going to pick me. They ain't going to pick some big black guy to be on the show. <laughs> The first round. Uh -uh. <laughs> come on they down. said, Vincent Ward, come on down. And when people jump up and look around, you really jump up and look around. <laughs> right. And I ran down there so fast, and I sat there for like five rounds. Each time, you know, people were like, looking back at the crowd, <laughs> looking back at the crowd. So this time I said I wasn't going to look back at the crowd. I was going to do my own thing. All of a sudden I heard, oh, from the crowd. Then he said, Vincent, that is you. That's you. Come oh, on nice. up. I want a, uh, a microwave and 10000 I got to spin a big wheel, which is not, not that big, to be, to be oh, honest really? with you. For you. <laughs> it might be big for me. What, uh, what game did you play? With, it was the one with? we had to um, get stuff that was like under $3 or something, or oh. under $5 or something like that. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. It was fun, though. Yeah, $10,000 is nothing awesome. to yeah. uh, shake a stick at. That's awesome. One dollar. <laughs> right? Right, right, right. <laughs> all right, so as we wrap up here, first of all, thank you so much. This was so fascinating, so eye-opening. Uh, we all learned so much about you and your work ethic and your professionalism and, you. and your, your messaging. Very, um, very impressive stuff. Walking Dead's been career changing for you. You've mentioned that. What's next for you? Tell us about your upcoming projects. Um, I can see that I got this show Psych is coming up. The new season of Psych. Uh, very, very funny episode. Uh, the conversation, uh, the Oscar card, uh, going to Rhode Island soon to shoot a, shoot a movie. Um, Live Evil. Look at my list over here. Right, right. All, <laughs> all your projects. Right. Cheat sheet. Cheat sheet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, might be on, might be, you might see me in Jet or Essence coming okay. up. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. we know you like to be on the cover of magazines and whatnot. Well, hey, so. I'd yeah. hey, just be in the back on right. one of those magazines. Right. I wouldn't care. I'd just be honored <laughs> to be on that. So. Very cool. And where can people find you on social media? What's your Twitter? Vincent M. Ward, Twitter. Awesome. My yeah. website, Vincent M. Ward. Got to put the M in. Right. right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And on uh, Facebook, Vincent M. Ward. Well, thank you so much, Vincent Ward. This was a fantastic conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are thank signing you. off. This was BHL Next, keeping you up to date with what is hot, new, and fresh in Black Hollywood. I'm your host, Ebony K. Williams. Find me on Twitter at Ebony K. Find me on Twitter at I am Jessica Keen. Find me all over the internet at The Nick Purdue. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Dario Kristen, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network. If you have questions or comments, tweet us at BHL Online or email us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. For more exclusive content, visit blackhollywoodlive.com. This has been a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network. The views expressed here are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Oh,